So hey guys, this video will be solving a popular lead code question, average of levels in a binary tree using Python. So the problem statement, like literally what's given in the question, will be given a binary tree as an input and our job is to find the average of each levels. So what do I mean? So the first level is basically this number three, as you can see here. So the average of first level is three by total number of numbers is just one. So it's just three. And the second level has the numbers nine and 20. And the average of nine and 20 is basically 20 plus nine by total number of numbers which is two here. So 20 plus nine by two, which is 14.5. And the next level has just 15 and seven. So average of 15 and seven is 11. So our job is to return the list containing average of each levels. So the most important uh, logic which we need to follow is to know what traversing algorithm to use. And since in this question we are traversing layer by layer, so this is the first layer and this is the second layer, this is the third layer, uh, the best approach we can use is breadth first search, so we're going to use BFS. So if you want to understand the concept of breadth first search and how it can be used in this problem, you can check out my friend's Robin's video, which will be right on top. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just uh, keep waiting. So the first step of implementing any BFS sort of algorithm is to initialize a cube. So I'm going to initialize the queue and I'm going to call it queue. I know zero brain cell naming, but please be a little more creative than me. And we're going to have a different uh, list called cur for current level. So why do we have this uh, list called cur? Well, the reason is what we're going to do with the curl list is we're going to traverse one level at a time. So the first initially the curl level uh, curl list will just have the first level element, which is just three. And the next iteration, we're going to make the curl level empty and add the next element, which is nine and 20. And we're going to add the curl uh, level back to the queue itself. So initially our Q first zeroth index will just have the element three and the next index will have the elements nine and 20 stored in the list. And the next level will have the elements 15 and seven stored in the list. So to do this, uh, we can just initialize cur as a uh, cur of root because the first level obviously has just the root element. So we can just make it easier by for us by initializing the cur with uh, the root element. And we can just iterate uh, while cur. So why do we have this condition while of cur? Uh, well, the reason is uh, every level has at least one node. We know that because the first level has one node. The second level has like two nodes here. The third level has two nodes. But what we notice here is after we reach the last level, the next level has zero number of nodes. So when do we know how to, how do we break out of the loop? When the current level has zero number of nodes, which means we reach the end already, we can just break out of the loop. And that's what we're doing here. So while cur, uh, we're adding the current level to the queue in each iteration. And we are making cur back to empty to add in the uh, nodes for the next level. So what are the nodes for the next level? So this is the root node, just three. So the next level has the elements left of three and elements right of three. So, and the next level has the elements left of nine and right of nine and elements left of 20 and right of 20. So that's what we're going to implement here. The most recently added level, we will have to find the elements left and right and add it to the curl level. And this is how uh, we actually uh, retrieve the recently added level, Q of minus one. The reason is minus one in Python also refers to the last index elements in a list. So if you don't know why it is minus one, you probably haven't watched my Python uh, tutorial video. You can check it on top. So what we have to know here basically is minus one refers to the most recently added level to the queue. So for each node in the queue of minus one, if the node has a left element, which is if the node's left element is not null, we are adding the node's left element to cur dot append node dot left. Yeah, I hope you can see. And the same logic uh, goes for the elements right element. So node dot right. If the node has any right element, we are adding the right node to the current list. 
and yeah that's what we're basically doing here uh the each levels element uh, keeps getting added to the queue here and we break out of the loop when the current uh, level has zero elements which means we have reached the last level already so we're breaking out and one thing we notice here is we're not adding the nodes value we're just adding the node itself as directly like node dot left uh, refers to the node itself it's not the nodes value to to retrieve the nodes value because you can see here is uh, dot val refers to the value of the node so to do this we uh, can actually after we break out of the loop we can uh, store each value separately in a 2d list using a val's 2d list so for each level for cur in uh, cube what we are doing here is we are adding uh, each node's value so for node in cur for node in cur and uh, for cur in queue <laughs> we are adding node dot value to the values list so our values list contains all the values of each level stored separately in each index and they want us to return the average so the average is basically sum of each level by total total number of elements in each level so it's basically sum of uh, level so I'll, be, I'll initialize level in a while by length of level that's basically the average and we can iterate each level as follows for level in the values uh, list which we just got and we have to return it as a list so we can just return this now let's just try to run this code as you can see this program runs and it's quite fast uh, the last time i actually ran this code it was faster than 99% but it's lead code every time you run the same program sometimes it gets slower uh, and the time complexity of this code is just o of n cause we just iterating through each nodes just once and the space complex is also often because the list we're using here is proportional to the number of nodes in the tree uh, now one thing i want you guys to try is to implement to solve this problem using a dfs kind of logic well i know bfs is level by level dfs is not level by level but you can actually solve this using dfs also so try doing it uh, and thank you for watching